we are going to graph this piecewise defined function and make sure you take a moment and separate it into its pieces. So study this and then notice how I've separated it into its two pieces. Now it doesn't matter where you begin, I can begin with this piece. I use this rule if x is greater than zero. Now I'm going to go ahead and let x be zero so I'll know where this piece exactly begins, but notice that I'm going to put an open circle about this ordered pair because I can't really let x be zero and use this rule. Let's think of numbers bigger than zero. What about zero for my open circle, I know it's not greater than zero, and then one and two. So if x is zero, I have negative three. I'm using this rule. If x is one, two times one is two, two minus three is negative one. And if x is two, two times two is four, four minus three is one. And let's just graph this piece. Zero, negative three, and that is an open circle only. That's reminding me of an open circle only. One, negative one, and two, one. Just to show you this one piece only, there is one piece of my piecewise defined function. Now let's work on the other piece. I use this piece if x is less than or equal to zero. Here I'm allowed to use zero, so I'm going to place a solid circle around that, reminding me that the point gets a solid point. What are numbers less than or equal to zero? I'm going to use negative two and negative four just to stay away from fractions, but you can certainly use negative one, negative three if you want. If x is zero, then y or f of x is zero. If x is negative two, what's negative one half times negative two? That's a positive one. And if x is negative four, a negative times a negative is a positive, and one half of four is two. All right, I have zero, zero, and that is a solid point, negative two, one, and negative four, two. And that's the other piece of this piecewise defined function. Now notice this does pass the vertical line test. This is a function. And I'm going to erase these pieces so you can see it a little bit better. Let's now look at the graph and write down the domain and range of this function. Let's write down domain and range. Remember domain has to do with x, so how far left and how far right. Well, every single x value has been graphed, so for domain, it's negative infinity to infinity. What about range? That's y value, so how far down and how far up? Well, how far up, because of these arrows, it's going up to positive infinity. How far down? The lowest point, and I don't have a, um, a bracket around it. I have a parenthesis around it. That's negative 3 with a parenthesis to infinity. There is the range of the function.